Good morning. Welcome to Gladeville United Methodist Church on this snowy morning. We are so glad that you are worshiping online with us. The choir will bring us into worship time. Opening hymn this morning is number 400. It is Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. our responsive reading this morning. It is Psalm 36 verses 5 through 10 and Phyllis will lead us in our responsive reading this morning. Your steadfast love, O Lord, exceeds to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. O oh Lord, humans and animals, you save. O oh God, how precious is your steadfast love. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you 
and your salvation to the upright of heart. as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's remember those who, who are sick. COVID is rampant. Let's lift those folks up. Lord, we have a lot of folks who are grieving the death of loved ones and folks who are, are waiting for test results and waiting for procedures. And Lord, we know that you are the great physician and that all healing comes through you and by you. So this morning, as we just stand here with broken and contrite hearts, we ask for your forgiveness for all that we have done and we know that you love us unconditionally. But Lord, help us to surrender our lives to you and use the gifts and graces with which you have been, you have blessed us with, with wisdom, and let us use it for your greater glory. Thank you, Lord, that we are part of the wider body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we are being fitted together as your body's dwelling holy place. And we pray that we may learn to use our spiritual gifts for the benefit of the whole body and rejoice that we are one in Christ through time and through eternity. Lord, you came to earth from heaven to die on the cross for our sins and the sins of the whole world. We thank you that you lifted us out of the slave market of sin and seated us together with Christ in heavenly places. So Lord, give us wisdom and discernment to identify pretenders of the faith who are sheep in wool's clothing and increasingly open the eyes of our understanding to know you more and to love you better. And Lord, as you look at our hearts and we ask for safety for those who are cleaning snow, we ask safety for those who, who can't stay home and have to be out in it. And, and we are thankful, Lord, the, this morning for first responders, for medical folks, and for the nurses and the doctors at the hospitals, and for those, Lord, our law enforcement, everyone who has to be out. Keep those who are plowing the snow so we can get out later on safe and in your care. And Lord, we thank you and we give back to you now the prayer you taught us to pray when we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our choir has an anthem. <coughs>
Thank you, choir. You may be seated. This morning, our, our scripture lesson comes from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And Phyllis is going to be our scripture reader this morning. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. This morning, Lord, let the words from my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Alice in Wonderland. Did you all have to read that book in school? I love Alice in Wonderland. It was one of my favorite books. And it's a magical story about a young girl who, who falls in a hole in a field and falls into another world unlike anything that she has ever experienced. She's in a new place with strange beings. She has no idea where she is or where she needs to go. And in one memorable scene, she meets up with the Cheshire cat this smiling cat. And she says, would you tell me please which way I need to go from here? Well, said the Cheshire cat, that depends a good deal on where you want to go. And Alice says to the cat, well, I don't much care where I go. And then the cat says, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. And Alice says, I just want to go so long as I get somewhere. And the cat says, oh, you're sure to do that if you only walk long enough. There's a lot of people in a lot of churches who seem to live out of Alice's philosophy. But not so God with his church. God cares a great deal about where we're going in life or he wouldn't have put these words to the <coughs> prophet Jeremiah who tells Israel, I have a plan for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. Fortunately for us, God has a plan for us, and he has given us a GPS. That's God's preferred steps. And God guides our steps if we will listen to him. And just like Carillion Pike and Route 58 are the same roadbed, God has given us a single path on which we are to travel. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same God. There are different kinds of services, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but the same Spirit works all of them in all people. Listen to this part of the text again. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given the Spirit of the message of wisdom. To another is a message of knowledge. 
and they're given by the means of the Spirit to another faith by the Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, another miraculous powers and to another pro prophecy, to another distinguishing between the, the spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of those tongues, and all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. You see, the goal that God wants for our church to pursue is that helping every child, every youth, every adult attending here at Gladeville to find their place to serve Jesus. You see, Paul wrote to each one the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. That means that it's God's plan for everyone associated with Jesus to serve. And to serve, I don't mean to be on committees or boards or volunteering in the church. Serving Jesus is a lot more than that. Serving Jesus is about empowering and equipping people to discover and use their God-given gifts and talents as an extension of and demonstration of Christ's physical body in the world. You see, Christ isn't physically with us any longer. So Jesus uses the love of others through the gifts that he's given us. The serving of Christ will be expre expressed by the serving of the church, each other, and serving others in the community through our daily living. As Mother Teresa so aptly put it, and I quote, I am a pencil in the hand of God. People used to uh, approach Mother Teresa over the years and, and give thanks to her for what she had done to, to help them or, or help somebody else. They saw Mother Teresa as someone who responded to the suffering of her own through her own kindness and grace and love. But she did what she could do to make sure that they knew that it wasn't her. It was Christ through her that made the difference. I read a story this week I want to share with you about Mother Teresa. And this was told by one of her disciples, somebody that worked with her for a long time. And this took place during morning mass. A well-dressed Indian woman rushed in and threw herself at the feet of Mother Teresa, bowing and kissing her hands and her feet. And Mother Teresa got this stern look on her face. And she pulled the, the woman's hand and she pointed her, her to, the, to the crucifix on the back wall. The woman was oblivious to this and kept kept kissing Mother Teresa on her hands and, and her feet. So Mother Teresa took her hand and pointed that woman's hand to the crucifix and said, it's not me, it's him. Give your thanks to him. She believed that everything she did, she was able to do in the lives of others because it was done through God's power through her. Like a pencil in your hand. She was a pencil in the hand of God. Let me tell you another story. I love this one. There was a single parent family, and it was just a mama and a little girl. And they weren't well off, and they ate a lot of peanut butter and jelly. And one day, the little girl, whose name was Sammy, she was six years old, noticed that the family in the apartment complex where, where they lived even had less than she and her mother. Mom, she said, those kids don't smell very good. And she held her nose like this, and she said, 
and they always wear the same clothes. So her mother tried to explain that they didn't have money to buy new clothes, and so Sammy looked down at her outfit, and she said, well, let's give them ours. And her mother smiled, and she said, but Sammy, they're all boys. So Sammy thought about it for that minute, and then she headed for the kitchen. And her mama heard opening cabinets and drawers and all this kind of stuff, and she, she, she peeked in, and she saw Sammy on a chair making sandwiches on the kitchen counter. What are you doing, she asked Sammy. And, and Sammy said, we need to share. Look, we have a whole jar of peanut butter. We have a whole loaf of bread. You want to help? So her mother kissed her on the forehead and said, yeah, I'll help. And Sammy said, Mother, we don't have time for this kissing. They need us. So an hour later, they delivered a picnic basket full of peanut butter sandwiches, some fruit, and some chips. And it couldn't have come at a better time for both families. You see, little Sammy was a crayon in the hand of God. Sometime, well, it's been a, several years ago, the Upper Room d Devotion, there was a, a story about this small town Methodist minister who shared about part of his ministry after he retired was to visit members and in his, the congregation or in the community or go to the home for a, a pastoral visit. And then he got sick. And he had things going on in his life that kept him from driving and from getting around. And it impacted his ministry so much that he thought that his ministry was done that his days of serving God were over. And then one day he, he had a come to Jesus meeting with himself. And he said, how can I carry on any ministry under these circumstances? And God spoke to him. And he started an intercessory prayer program. And people would call him to pray for people. He started writing personal letters and sending cards and emailing messages and, and, and making phone calls. And he went on to say, this article said, finding new ways to minister has given away frustration about my limited mobility and made me grateful for the Christian outreach that is possible from my living room chair. Every day, God provides him with opportunities to use one or more of those methods when he thought that his, his ministry was over, but he is needed. You see, he was a keyboard or a mouse in the hands of God. He reminds me of Melanie Snow. You see, Melanie Snow is the person who sends out the copies of the letters and the sermons every week for me to those folks who were shut in or can't come to church for some reason. And she sends out about 15 a week. Those folks will get a copy of, of this sermon. It was sent out this past week. And Melanie folds them and she puts them in envelopes, and she addresses them, and she stamps them, and then she, they go to the, the post office, and she has one of the kids mail them. Melanie said she didn't think that there was ministry that she could do in the church because she can't teach, she can't sing. There's a lot she can't do because of her physical health. But she said, I can do this. And because she serves Jesus in this way, she plays a part in helping us to become better disciples of Christ and to make better disciples of Christ. I have a simple question for you this morning. What kind of church do you want to be associated with? 
Do you want to be associated with a sick and weak church or a healthy and vibrant church? And if you want to be part of a healthy church, that, then that will require us helping each other find their place to serve. We're in a new year now, and there are plenty of opportunities to serve God. If God is putting something new on your heart, let me know so we can walk through that. It's sometimes a wilderness. Sometimes it's hard starting something new. I want us to look inside ourselves, to identify our gifts and graces, and spend some time rethinking what God has called you to do. There is also a list of needs in the church and the community that you could give yourself to to serve Jesus Christ. I hope that every time you see or hold a pencil, a crayon, or a mouse when you're in front of the computer, you know and it will remind you that when it comes to serving Christ, each of us has a spot. I like to think about this. Can you imagine standing at the, on the shore of the Red Sea like the, the Israelites did? And they had a life or death decision to make. They had God's future literally opening up before them. And they had the past catching up to their back. One decision would lead them to the promised land and becoming the community of God that, that God had in mind, and the other one would keep that from happening. The Israelites didn't have a clue what was in front of them. They didn't know what their future looked like, but that didn't stop them from forging ahead with God's will for their life together. We don't know really what's in the future. We don't know what is set in front of us. But that shouldn't stop us, and it can't stop us, from putting our lives in, into the hands of God, our, ourselves into the hands of God, our church into the hands of God, so we can be a pencil or a crayon or a mouse or whatever we need to be to build the kingdom of God here on earth and continue to make disciples. Let's pray. Lord, this morning we thank you. We give you honor, praise, and glory in all things. And we thank you for the opportunity that you give us every day to be your hands and feet, to be a pencil or a crayon or a mouse to build your kingdom. Our gifts are different, but the Spirit is one. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of sending forth is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Yeah. Sure.
remembering whose you are and whom you serve, and that God loves you more than the sun and the stars. And remember this week to be a crayon, a pencil, or a mouse for the building of the kingdom. Amen and amen. Thank you.